Elvis, have you heard the mail truck come by yet? Huh? Oh, nope. No mail truck. Just the trash truck and the school bus and the ice cream truck. Wow, Elvis, you have very good ears. Thank you. But why are you waiting on the mail truck, Avery? Well, I'm waiting on a special package to arrive. A special package? Ooh. Friends, have you ever had to wait for a special package to come in the mail? Well, today I'm hoping to get one that I have been waiting and waiting for. The, the mail, mail truck. truck! Come on, friends. Let's go see if my special package came. Hi, Cambria. Oh, uh, hi, Avery. Friends, this is my neighbor, Cambria. She loves singing and dancing and helping others. Hi, everyone. Cambria, I need to ask you though, what did you just put in my mailbox? You saw that? <sighs> just this. It's a letter to God. You see, I tried sending it in my mailbox, but it just kept getting returned. So I thought maybe it would work if I tried sending it in your mailbox. But, Cambria, you know you can't send letters to God the same way that you send letters to people. But then, how do I talk with Him? Well, the Bible teaches us to talk with God through prayer. When we pray, we can speak to God just like I'm speaking to you right now. I've tried that, Avery, but it doesn't seem to be working. Well, what do you mean? I really, really want a pony. I've wanted one since I was a little girl. My mom said I should ask God about it. So I prayed and prayed, but nothing happened. I don't think God heard me. So that's why I decided to try writing him a letter. Um, hang on, Cambria. I think I might know something that can help you. What is that? This is a special package that I've been waiting on for a long time. Do you want to help me open it? Sure. Friends, come on over to the porch with us as we see what's in my special package. All right, let's see what we have here. Oh, goody. Did you get your special package, Avery? I sure did. Wait, what is that? This is apple butter. Friends, apple butter is a yummy treat made from apples. And this apple butter is special because it's made from the apples on my papal's farm. That's so neat, but I don't get how that's supposed to help me with my prayer problem. Well, my papal's apple butter is one of my favorite treats ever. When I was younger, I used to ask my papal for apple butter every time I saw him. Sometimes he would say yes. Other times he would say no or wait. Why wait? My papa knew what was best for me. Sometimes he knew that giving me apple butter would be a great treat for that day. But other times he knew that I had already eaten a lot of sugar, so it wouldn't be good for me to have apple butter then. Or you might get a tummy ache. That happens to me when I eat too much sugar. Right, Elle. Also, my papal knew that there were times of year where the apples didn't grow. Like in winter? Right, so he would tell me to wait and be patient until the apples were ready so he could make apple butter. I guess that makes sense. You see, Cambria, I think prayer works kind of the same way. God knows what's best for us. When we talk to him, he always hears us. But sometimes his answer isn't yes. Sometimes it's no or wait. So maybe God's telling me that I need to be patient. Like, maybe now's not the best time for me to have a pony. Maybe when we don't see God answer our prayers right away, 
that doesn't mean that he doesn't hear us. It just means that he has a different plan. And because he loves us and knows what's best for us, we can trust him. Thanks, Avery. That makes a little more sense. Hey, why don't we share some of this apple butter together right now and I can tell you a story about a woman in the Bible who prayed for something that she wanted more than anything else in the world. A long time ago, there was a woman named Hannah who was very sad because she had no children. So one day she went to the temple of the Lord to pray. Through her tears, she made a promise to the Lord. Lord Almighty, Hannah prayed, if you will give me a son, then I will give him back to the Lord for all the days of his life. God answered Hannah's prayer, and soon she gave birth to a son, and he was named Samuel. When Samuel was old enough, Hannah took him to the temple of the Lord. Hannah found Eli, the high priest, and said to him, Pardon me, sir, I prayed for this child here, and now the Lord has given me what I ask of him. So I give my son to the Lord. For all his life, he will serve him. When he heard this, Eli worshiped the Lord. Then he took young Samuel to live in the temple with him, and Hannah returned home. Now in those days, it was rare to hear a message from the Lord. However, one night, Eli and Samuel were sleeping in the temple when the Lord called to Samuel. Samuel, Samuel. Samuel got up and ran to Eli. Here I am, you called me. I didn't call you, Eli replied. Go back and lie down. So Samuel went back to lay down. Once again, the Lord called, Samuel. Samuel got up, went to Eli and said, here I am, you called me. I didn't call you, my son, Eli replied. Go back and lie down. A third time, the Lord called Samuel, and he got up and went to Eli. Now, Samuel did not yet recognize that it was the voice of the Lord. But Eli then understood that the Lord was calling the boy. Eli told him, if he calls you, say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay back down. The Lord came, stood there, and called as before. Samuel, Samuel, Samuel responded. Speak, for your servant is listening. The Lord then gave Samuel an important message to tell Eli. From that day on, Samuel knew the voice of the Lord, and he served the Lord for the rest of his life. Hi friends, welcome back to my craft room. Today, we've been talking all about bacon. Um, no Elvis, we haven't been talking about bacon. We've been talking about prayer. Oh, right. We've been talking about prayer, but I've been thinking about bacon. Maybe later, buddy. Right now, we're going to do an activity that will help us focus on prayer. Remember how in today's Bible story, Hannah never gave up praying for a baby and God answered her prayers. Colossians 4, 2 tells us, continue steadfastly in prayer, being watchful in it with thanksgiving. I love thanksgiving. All that food, turkey and stuffing and green beans with bacon. Elvis, this verse isn't about thanksgiving the holiday. It's talking about how we are supposed to be thankful for how God answers our prayers. Friends, this is an activity we're going to do. It's something I did with my family when I was a kid to help us remember to pray often and to see how God answered our prayers. Sounds like a good idea. How do we start? It's pretty simple. All you will need is two jars or containers. If you don't have jars, plastic cups will work just fine. Then gather some stickers, markers, ribbon, and anything else you want to use to decorate your jars. The last thing you will need is some popsicle sticks. But if you don't have popsicle sticks, you can just use some pieces of paper. Then what? Then it's time to decorate your jars. One of your jars will be your prayer jars, and the other jar will be your praises jar. 
Make sure to write the word prayers on one of your jars and the word praises on the other. Have fun decorating! Great! Once your jars are decorated, then grab your popsicle sticks and put on your thinking caps because this is the most important part. What are we doing now? We're going to start writing down some things that we are asking God for. Just like Hannah asked God for a baby, we see in the Bible that God wants us to come to Him and ask for things that He can give us. Ooh, ooh like bacon! Well, it's okay to ask God for things that we would like to have, but there are more important things to ask God for than snacks and toys. Friends, what are some things that God tells us to pray for? Yes, in the Bible, God tells us to pray for the leaders of our church, to pray for missionaries, to pray for people who don't know Jesus, and to pray for those who are sick. God even tells us to pray for our enemies. Wow. That's a lot of important things to pray for. Yes, and that's why writing them down helps us to remember. Let's write down some things that we want to remember to pray for on our popsicle sticks. First, I'm going to write down the name of my pastor, Pastor Steve. I want to pray for him as he helps lead my church. I also want to pray for my friends, Isabella and Mandy. They are missionaries telling people across the world about Jesus. And lastly, I want to pray for Mr. Adam. He is a man who goes to my church and recently he has been very sick. I want to remember to pray for him and his family. Hooray! But what about the other jar? It wants some popsicle sticks too. <laughs> then let's give it some. Friends, this other jar is our praises jar. Do you know what praises mean? In Psalm 150, the Bible tells us to praise the Lord for His mighty deeds. That means we need to tell God thank you for all the wonderful things He does. What are some wonderful things that God does? Well, first of all, the most wonderful thing God has ever done is sending Jesus to be the Savior of the world. We should remember every day to praise God for Jesus. But we can also praise God for things we see in creation. Last night, I saw the most beautiful sunset. I want to praise God for being the creator of that sunset. Ooh, Avery, can we praise God for bacon? You really have bacon on the brain, don't you, Elvis? Well, the Bible does say 
that God is the one who provides the food we eat. So, yes, I guess we can praise God for bacon. Oh, goody. Now, friends, the fun part of this activity is that sometimes we get to watch our prayers turn in to praises. You see, there are some prayers that we pray that we get to watch God answer. For example, last year I was praying for my friend Keaton. Keaton was not a Christian, but I kept praying that God would change his life. Then one day, Keaton decided to trust Jesus as his savior. That night, I moved my popsicle stick from the prayers jar to the praises jar. This helps remind me to praise God for answering my prayer. That's great. Friends, you can use your prayer jars at any time of the day. I like to set them on my kitchen table and pick one prayer and one praise each mealtime. Then I pray and praise God for those things before I eat. Avery, can we go use those prayer jars right now? I think it's time for a snack. Sure, Elvis. Let's take these to the kitchen. Friends, I hope this activity helps you and your families draw closer to God as you talk with Him each and every day. See you next time. sharing, Avery. Of course. And second, I learned that prayer isn't just about getting what you want. It's about trusting God and learning what He wants for us. Yes, the main point of prayer is to get to know God better. It's about telling Him what's on our hearts and asking to know what's on His. I am so glad that God answered Hannah's prayer with a yes. Samuel was a really special baby. Yes, he was. But Hannah had to be patient as she waited for God to answer her prayer. And third, I learned that prayer isn't just about talking to God. It's also about listening to Him. I think that it's so cool that God talked to Samuel when he was just a kid. 
The Bible tells us that God loves children and He wants to speak to them. I wonder if God wants to speak to me too. I know He does, Cambria. In fact, the Bible is one of the most important ways that God speaks to us. Here, why don't you take this home with you? That way you can read what God wants to tell you. Really? Oh, wow. I can't wait to start reading. I'm going to take this home right now. Avery, thank you. You're welcome. See you soon. Bye. And I'll see you soon too, friends. Thanks for joining us today. Remember, God loves you and he wants to hear from you and speak to you. Catch you next time for another adventure in my big backyard.